chapter. And uh, you know, uh, I was thinking as as uh, James was reading that. That's a uh, scripture that I've been uh, working on the last few days, and and uh, God's been dealing with me about a message, and and that was a very very scripture that uh, that uh, was, uh, that I'm looking at. I'm going to be getting reading at this 16th verse. And uh, when you've got it, just say amen. 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 <laughs> and it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are servants of the Most High God, which show us the way of salvation. And this did she many days, but Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee, in the name of Jesus Christ, to come out of her, and he came out and this, uh, this, the same hour. And when her masters saw that the hopes of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace and to the rulers and brought them to the magistrates, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs that we are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes before them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And, the, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the, prison, the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prisons were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open, and every one's hand, the bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep, and seeing the prison's doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried out with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light, and he sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them, uh, and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And he said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Father, we thank you, God, for your word. God, we thank you that you can open it up in a way that even the smallest child can understand it. God, we thank you for this privilege. God, we thank you that you're always an on-time God. And God, I pray that you will use these lips of clay, God, to bring forth this word. In Jesus' name, and the church says, Amen. 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 Now we're talking about uh, something here that uh, so many times uh, we don't uh, we don't realize there's there's certain words that we just really don't realize what it is. But this woman, what she was into, she was into witchcraft, yeah. and uh, and witchcraft, and uh, in, in those days, uh, they were uh, that uh, she was working for these guys. Now, for the sake of, of knowing what exactly we're talking about, we're going to call them pimps 
because that's what they were. You know, prostitutes have pimps. Amen. These uh, these people, they had pimps. They had people that were out there that were making sure that they were doing what they were supposed to be doing. And when they, Paul and Silas came in into this area and they began to uh, look uh, at... Uh, 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 begin to preach and, and people begin to hear and this lady she hear, heard the, the message of Paul and Silas and she knew that they had something that she didn't have in her life you and I if you're a, a born again Christian there was a time that you came uh, to a place that you realized that somebody else had something that you didn't have yeah. And that's what the world is looking for today. They're looking for something that is real. They're looking for something that will change their life and make things better. And, and so sad that uh, that that, uh, that uh, don't happen as often as uh, as what uh, what it should. Uh, I was talking to uh, a fellow just before we left this evening there to, across uh, one of the neighbors, and and I said it, it's time that God's people come together in one accord. Yeah. One accord, you know. Now, you know, on, on the day of Pentecost, it said they were in one accord in one place. And that's exactly what's important for you and I, uh, to be in one accord. That, but, uh, one accord means one mind. We've got to be like-minded. Listen, it doesn't matter what we disagree on. Yeah. We need to quit disagreeing and, and capitalize on what we agree on. Yes. And that will make a difference in, in our life. But as this, uh, this girl, she began to follow uh, Paul and Silas and she uh, began to uh, be, uh, to desire uh, this salvation message that they were preaching. And uh, it was completely against uh, what their, their custom was, as it said. But, but uh, as they were uh, there, you know, the... Uh, the things that that uh, Paul and Silas were preaching, there was a time that they realized that uh, after a few days, they realized that this spirit in this girl had to come out. Yeah. It, she needs to be set free of that. Now, you, you know, not everybody, not everybody is demon possessed. However, if we're if we're not if we're not saved, then the the devil. Is the one that's living inside of us. It may, it may not be the possession that, that we think, but if he's got a hold on our lives, I know people that that are good moral people. They they live clean lives, uh, but they've never been born again. But the thing of this, they are as lost as the one that's done the worst sin that ever was, committed murder or any of these other things, you know. And, and we we kind of look at the things and. And I know as uh, Pastor Bev uh, many times uh, talks about her past and what she's done. But you know what? Her past is gone. It's no longer, it's no longer there. It's, she looks back on it as a testimony, but it's gone. She is forgiven, and that's never to be brought against her again. Well, this girl didn't understand this. And as Paul and Silas begin to talk about this and begin to witness to her, begin to minister, uh, they, they said that they, she had it to be this spirit of divination. And divination does mean witchcraft. It had to come out of her. And uh, as uh, that message went across, then the, uh, the people uh, that she was working for, the pimps that she was working for, they become uh, very angry because uh, what, uh, what they had said is, uh, or what they were saying then that uh, they commanded or demanded that uh, they be, uh, be prosecuted or they be brought to the magistrates and, and this is what it, uh, what it uh, is all about. And tonight as a title I'd like to uh, say for my message is, is locked up but not locked out. See, there's a, a difference, you know. There, there's been some of you here that's been in, in prison. You've been in jail. You were locked up, but you still weren't locked out because you can still, you still had the right to call upon the name of Jesus, no matter, no matter what it is. They can't tie you down tight enough, 
and, they, and, and they can't even actually, they couldn't even tape your mouth and gag you to keep for you call, calling on the name yeah. of Jesus. Because I want to tell you something, he hears our moanings, he hears our groanings, and he knows exactly what it's all about. It's very important that we that we realize that. So what they did, they took him to the magistrate. They they arrested him, took him to the magistrate. The magistrate, as uh, he was listening to the charges, he said, they do things that are not uh, our custom. Them being Jews uh, uh, do exceedingly trouble our our city. And as uh, and the, the, the magistrate started looking at those charges and and you can tell real quick that the magistrate was on their side and agreed because he he commanded that they what rent off their clothes tear off their clothes humiliate them in front of this in front of everybody and to to tear their clothes off then he commanded they be beaten well i don't know if you realize this but in that day when somebody that was a charge to be bit, beaten they were to be beaten 40, 40 stripes, 40 times. That was the law. That, and, uh, and so uh, even when Jesus, later when Jesus was beaten and, and took the stripes on his back, the reason he took 39 is because the law was, it was 40, but if they went over, those that was beating him would receive the same punishment and even be put to death. So that's the reason that uh, they didn't want to, uh, in case they miscounted, they didn't want to put 40 stripes on Jesus, uh, and they stopped one short in case they miscounted. So that's why there was 39 stripes on Jesus. But that day they received uh, the stripes on their back. And then uh, they uh, were told to, to go to, uh, to take them into uh the, the jailer and to, and to uh, explain uh, this way that he was to charge them not only to charge them but he was to throw them into prison and, and to lock them down well it says that he was put and they were put in the inner prison I, I want you to realize what the inner prison is all about this is a gory scene uh, you know that, uh, that to, to think about it the inner prison was that area below the prison down in the dungeon area where you can just imagine how many has ever been in an old dingy uh, cellar back in, back in uh, down in the ground where it's a mold and all this and, and that awful rank smell well, this is what this was, was the inner prison. And you've got to realize that they didn't have sanitation systems like we have. They didn't have septic tanks and they didn't have city sewer and they didn't have all that. The waste from those jailers, uh, those people that were in, those inmates, it went into this area. So you can imagine how bad it was. But they were chained together in stocks down in that, in that, in that awful place. And it said that uh, they they began to uh, 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 at the midnight hour they began to to uh, I'm I'm sure they've been talking I'm sure they've been talking all, all day and they they knew exactly what they were going to do I believe it was a plan you know I really believe that and uh, and and so at midnight it said they began to uh, begin to pray and they began to sing praises. And when they begin to sing praise, I want to tell you something. If you want a blessing from God, you begin to praise Him, and the blessings come down. When praises go up, the blessings come down. He will bless you more than you can ever imagine in the dark, darkest time of your life. You get up in the morning, you don't feel real good, you begin to praise Him. It's not going to be long until you're going to feel better and you're going to feel the presence of God. All. It don't say when you feel good to praise Him. It says in everything, yes. give praise Him. If, you're, if your wallet is, is, is empty and if, if you've got cutoffs on your, on your utilities or whatever, you begin to praise God and things is going to happen. God is going to move in a mighty way when we begin to praise Him. 
He said, let everything that had breath, praise the Lord. If, if you don't know if you're the one, just check your pulse. If you got a pulse, that means you're supposed to praise Him. We all have an obligation to praise God. It talks about the sacrifice of praise. That's why it's a sacrifice, is to praise Him whether we feel like it, whether we're feeling good, whether everything is taken care of, we just need to praise Him no matter what. And that's what it's all about. Paul and Silas begin to praise him and it said, and at, at the, that was at the midnight hour and, and all at once there's a, there was something that, that happened. It said, and suddenly. Yeah. Can you say that? Yeah. Suddenly. Yeah. See, yeah. see, we need some suddenness in our life. Yeah. Yeah. We need some suddenness. Did you know that, uh, that, that when uh, uh, Jesus was born and he was in the manger and the, and the angel, the angel appeared and suddenly the angel appeared yeah. and it told about Jesus oh. and, and about him him uh, being born. Listen, when, uh, when uh, Paul, uh, at, at that time was Saul, was on the road to, to Damascus and suddenly he became blinded by the light and, and God was able to move. Then he went on, you know, to, to write two-thirds of the New Testament. Look what a suddenly had that had that effect uh, had on him. And then in the, up, in the upper room it said, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. Then we get over to uh, where Paul and Silas were, were there and said, and suddenly there was an earthquake. Yeah. Listen, I want to tell you, there was an earthquake, but it shook every band off of them. It shook every band off of them. The doors were open. They were up out of there and the, and the jailer seen that they were loose and the doors was open. See, there was a law in that day if a jailer would lose a prisoner, if there was a prison break and they lost them, they would lose their life. They would be put to death because of that. And that jailer came out and was getting ready to uh, take his own sword and kill himself. But Paul said, Do thyself no harm, for we're all here. And then he went in and looked through the, uh, the jail and he saw that that uh, everyone, everyone was there. Everyone was accounted for. He came out and fell down at, at their feet and said, what must I do to be saved? You know what? There's people that, uh, that we see all the time that uh, they'll come up and they ask us questions that may not uh, sound like that, may not be those words, but how many times uh, somebody came up and said, you know, every time I look at you, you're smiling. Where does that come from? Yes. You know, could they be saying, what must I do to be saved? Amen. You know, Amen. You know they, they're looking, Amen. it's up the door. You know, uh, uh, there's so many things that happens in our life. There's so many times that, that somebody will come up and they'll say, you know, uh, I've had it because I've had trouble with my legs. Uh, sister, as we're praying for you, I've, I've had trouble I, uh, coming over tonight. I had, had trouble and sometimes it gets worse and and when there's a lot of rain and everything, but but uh, I've been uh, to the place that that I couldn't hardly get around. And all at once, somebody will come up and say, "Well, you're always smiling, and you just act like you don't have a pain or anything." Could they be saying, "What must I do to be saved?" See, we've got to we got to pay attention to the situ situation, and and are they are they saying that? What must I do to be saved? What can I do to know Jesus? But it went on to say uh, that uh, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Yeah. I was thinking as, uh, as the pastor was taking her laps there a few minutes ago after her son uh, stood up and uh, talked about them being in church together. I want to tell you something. When we stay faithful to God, we stay true and faithful. Listen, it will make a difference in our family. And uh, they'll want what, what we've got. I've got a son that's been on drugs for 20 some years. But you know what? He told uh, one of his bosses, he said, he said, if I ever get uh, get a, 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 to the place a, a, that, that I can uh, uh, get in church and, and uh, do these things, said, I just want to live just like my daddy. Said, I want to be, that's the kind of kind of witness I'm going to be. Listen, I didn't tell you that to blow a whistle on me. I'm telling you that we've got to live that kind of life so they want to, what we've got, what we what they know that we have. 
these are the important things that happen and, and, and all this is good. But you know what, there's something there that's, 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 uh, that's so important. And this is why that it's important for you and I to come and worship together. It's important that we come to church and, and that we bind together and we come in agreement uh, uh, with each other and pray for each other. But you know what? When uh, when they arrested when they arrested uh, Paul and Silas when when uh, they demanded they they arrest them and, and they they arrested them and took them into the mess. Listen, they didn't make a mistake. They didn't mess up. They didn't mess up when they when they arrested them. And they didn't mess up. They didn't mess up when when they took him to the magistrate. The magistrate didn't mess up when he told them to tear their clothes off, humiliate them. He didn't mess up when he told them when he told them to uh, to beat them. And he didn't mess up. They didn't mess up when uh, when the magistrate told them to to take him to the jailer. And to put him in. The jailer didn't mess up when he when he put him in the inner prison. But you know where he made a mistake? He chained them together. Amen. He chained them together. Listen, when you and I realize the importance of being in church and, and being faithful to God and being faithful in, in serving God and being at church when when we're supposed to be in, in church and when there are services. Listen, it is important that we do that because you're going to come to a time in your life that you're going to need your brothers and sisters yeah. more than anything else. And it's important that you're you, you're connected. It's important that you're that you're exactly there. And yeah. You know, as I can look down and I can see uh, Paul and, and Silas as, as they had to be Jane said that their feet were in in, in the stocks and, and how that uh, they couldn't move. And, and, you know, I can almost just see, I don't think there was any comfort there at all with that, with the way they were put in there. But the most important thing is that they knew that even though that they were locked up, that they had a way of escape because they knew that they could still praise God. They knew that no matter what the situation was, that they could praise Him, that they could lift up their voice and praise. They could begin to sing praises. And because they knew that, listen, I don't believe for one minute that they were ever, that they were ever down with the doom and gloom over what had took place. I just believe that. I, you know, and uh, if we go to checking on Paul, you know, Paul was pretty accustomed to being in jail. He he was in jail most of his ministry and wrote most of the New Testament uh, and why he was in jail. And and, and uh, you know that, that's uh, that's something else. I mean, you know he he was he had the first prison ministry, I guess, uh, from the uh, way it looks. But but the thing is that no matter what where we're at, we've got to see ourselves out of our stuck circumstance. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, I gave a, an example here uh, back uh, during the revival and how that we used to play marbles and we'd draw that circle in the, in the dirt and we'd put marbles. Everybody put so many marbles in the middle and then we'd get out and we'd try to knock them out. And and, uh, and so that's the thing. But we've got to, we uh, sometimes allow ourselves to be in a circle like those marbles were. But the thing is, we can get out of that when we begin to see ourselves out through the vision. We've got to get a vision. I, I know where Tony's sitting back there, but in order for me to get to where Tony's at, I've got to get out of where I'm at. Yeah. I've got to step out of this place. And you and I will never be able to step out of where we're at, out of our... our uh, misery out of our whatever the situation is until we get a vision of where we want to be. And that's exactly that where it's at. The Bible says without a vision the people perish. We all think uh, we all think that is uh, is just uh, that uh, that the pastor's got to have a, a vision. Yes, the pastor's got to have a vision, but we've got to have a vision for our own lives. We've got to have a vision that we're going to see things accomplished in our lives and, and we'll see things happen. Now all of us have goals. We have, we have goals. 
And and uh, I heard uh, somebody say one time said, uh, "What well, so you said goals? Uh, we never we never make them." Listen, I would rather I would rather set a goal and not be able to uh, make it all as to not make one and accomplish that. You see what I mean? There's an old saying, you know, said I was I came into this world with nothing, and so far so uh, so far I've been able to keep much most of that. That's a, you know. <laughs> that's not much of, of, of life. You know, we came in with nothing. We still got it. <laughs> you know, but we can move beyond where we're at. We've got to, we've got to do it. Paul and Silas seen themselves and felt that awful stench down in that place when they were tied together and they were chained together down there. But they knew that if they begin to sing the praises of God and they begin and uh, begin to cry out to God, that there would be. That something take place, and that's when the suddenly happened in their life. Now, I, I, I think that you you guys know me well enough that, that uh, if I ask you this question, you do it. How many needs a suddenly in your life? Amen. Really? Yeah. There's your hand. If you need a suddenly in your life, well, I, I think we all. I think we all need a suddenly. I think we all do. It, it may. It, they may all differ. They may all differ. But I'll guarantee you one thing, we need a spiritual suddenly. Yes. Even if we had one last night, or if we had one this morning, we need another spiritual suddenly. We need suddenlies in our life, and that's the, that's the thing. How we're going to get our suddenlies is begin to cry out to God, begin to sing His praises, begin to just thank Him for everything He's done, begin to praise Him. Listen, I want to tell you, you don't have to look back very far until you can thank Him for the, the last blessing He's given you. And you don't have to look back very far. You don't even have to look back as far as salvation. You don't even have to look back as far as when you received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It's not... It, listen, we were blessed this morning because we woke up and we were able to, to breathe a, another day and, and be able to praise God. You know, I, I, I manage a cemetery and, and, uh, and so uh, there, I had a couple came in the other day and they were all uh, down in the dumps and, and they, they just wouldn't, uh, just nothing, nothing was uh, moving them at all. And, and, uh, and I said, uh, you know, uh, I said, uh, there is probably uh, some people that's buried out there that would love to have the opportunity that you and I have. And that is to, to wake up another day and be able to be with our family. So we don't have to look very far until we can see exactly where our lives need to change. We need to change our, our goals. We need to set our goals higher. And, uh, you know, there's a, so many times I've heard people that's failed. They say, uh, Jesus, get me back to where I once was. Why would you want to get back there? That was a slippery place, and you failed. Yeah. We need to pray that God will get us above yeah. that that place. Right. Have you ever tried to climb? He I haven't done it for a long time because of my my legs. But but uh, I remember as a young boy, we we take off up the hill behind the church over there, Earnshaw. Man, we we go back up there. We had this cabin up there, and uh, if you didn't hit that hill just right, you go slide back down. It was slick. I mean, they wasn't, it wasn't snow or anything. It didn't even have to be raining. That place was a slick place, and it was rough. And we had to maneuver a way we could get around that, you know. Well, I think that's the way we have to do it in a Christian life. There are areas that that we have a hard time with. There are areas that, that is... is hard for us to get through. What we need to do is put our trust in God yeah. and say, God, I'm holding on to your hand. Yeah. I, I'm going to let you lead me. I'm going to let you guide me. I'm not walking I'm not walking ahead of you, but I'm here to be guided by you. And that's what it's all about. Yeah. There's, right. a, there's a license plate and a, a, a sticker that I've seen for, uh, for years and it said, God is my co-pilot. He's my pilot. Mm -hmm. He's my God. He's my pilot. He's never crashed. He's never messed up. Listen, he's my pilot. Listen, I I I am riding in the in the first class section, buddy. I'm sitting there and letting him lead and guide my life, and 
and I don't have a worry in my life. As long as we set our goals, and as long as we get up praising Him, we're going to see great things happen in our life. Would you stand with me tonight?